Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Thursday, the 17th of June. What a difference a day makes. The rain is gently pattering down. I'm sure the gardens are very much appreciative of it. Today, the church is remembering Samuel and Henrietta uh, Barnett, uh, who were social reformers who died in 1913 and 1936, respectively. So let me tell you a little bit about them and then we will join together in prayer. Uh, so Samuel Barnett was born on the 8th of Feb, 1844 and he died this day in 1913. Uh, he was born in Bristol and he went up to Oxford to be educated uh, before being ordained as a Church of England priest. Uh, he, um, he then went to uh, be a curate in London at St Mary's in uh, uh, Bryanston Square and uh, he was uh, and he met and then married uh, Henrietta Octavia Weston Rowland who later became Dame Henrietta um, Barnett DBE. Um, and they worked together to improve the East End of London. Uh, so around the, uh, around the impoverished Whitechapel Parish of St. Jude's, which uh, uh, Bartlett took on later on. Um, and so if you can imagine, this is a time when prostitution and criminality was incredibly rife in the East End. It was really the forgotten part of London. Um, this is just before the Jack the Ripper murders. Uh, there were slums, there were gin palaces. It was really quite grim. And so they worked really hard to try and uh, uh, to, to help educate and to improve the living standards of those who are living there. They started um, evening schools for adults, they provided music and entertainment, um, they went on to the school wards, uh, they also um, they started uh, uh, creating indoor relief and organising charities to help those who were most in need. Um, the exciting interesting thing which they uh, did was they looked at the East End Dwellings Company, which they helped to, uh, uh, to, 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 to support. And this was building model homes and kind of get, trying to give the new example how uh, homes should be built so that they weren't the slums and the kind of the overcrowdedness, which was so exemplified in the East End. The other thing which they did, which was really interesting, which was um, in 1884, they, they started the University Settlements, um, which was the idea was that, um, OK, so in those days, it was only the very rich, the, 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 the wealthy classes who would go to university. And so the university settlements was to try to place those wealthy people with those who were poorer to actually have that co-mingling and that mixing of cultures and understanding, partly for those who are being educated to be able to pass on the education to others, but also for those being educated to receive a, an understanding and education from those who, who were not a university. Um, and so this was started, as I said, in um, uh, 1844, uh, Henrietta Bartlett um, wrote an article about and uh, discussing the question of university settlements um, and then in um, soon after they helped to found uh, Toneby Hall uh, which was named after the historian Arthur to uh, Arnold Toneby um, and it then was taken on by uh, an American reformer Jane Adams in 1888 um, and so this is a really kind of exciting way to try to have that cultural mixing and so you get a better understanding because actually if you don't have experience of actually people who are living in kind of fairly poor conditions how are you expected to actually be able to to try and offer help support and understanding and so this was really was to try and to create that that change for the positive um the other thing which the uh, the Bartlett's were involved in was the Hampstead Garden suburb um which is uh, um Hampstead Heath and was developed uh, uh, de a, from a development by Eton College. Don't know where that is. Maybe somewhere nearby. Um, and it was the uh, and it was the Savage Trust. And again, it was trying to develop better social housing, better facilities, better infrastructure within London. So actually, those who were living in central London, uh, you know, in what were fairly rubbishy conditions, um, were actually getting a better standard of living. So two very good influential people and so we will pray and give thanks for their lives today and we shall pray for all who live in difficult conditions i think after the 18 months we've had so far and counting people who are stuck in high-rise flats people who are without access to their own um, green spaces i think will probably be feeling very similar to those who are living in such cramped conditions if you live in a flat if you're high up above the ground and you have no way or getting out except to go into the public spaces when there's a pandemic on, it gives you a very difficult um, position to be in. Um, and we need to recognise actually the quality of living of everybody is important. We also need to be grateful for the things which we do have. 
Uh, so for those of us who do have gardens, that is a, a wonderful blessing. And for those of us uh, have, who don't, we could recognise actually the need to ensure that we are creating a, a space where all have that, that green space and that, that space to flex and to grow and to, to stretch one's legs. But as we come together, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. For you found the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence amongst us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad. For you will judge the peoples righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 56. In God I trust, and will not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample over me all the day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear I put my trust in you, in God where I, whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? All day long they wound me with words, that every thought is to do me evil. They stir out trouble, they lie in wait. Marking my steps they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O God, cast the people down. You have counted up my groanings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not written in your book? Then shall my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon you. This I know, for God is on my side. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust and, and will not fear. What can flesh do to me? To you, O God, will I fulfil my vows. To you will I present my offerings of thanks, <clears throat> for you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In God I trust and will not fear. Our second psalm for this morning is Psalm 56, 57. Sorry. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions. Peoples whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongues are sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net from my feet, my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me, and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. 
Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. My uh, The third psalm for this morning is Psalm 63. <coughs> my soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up your, my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it, shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword, and become a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God, all those who swear by him shall be glad. For the mouths of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of uh, the book of Job, chapter 23, from the beginning to the end of the chapter. Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, <coughs> that I knew where I might find him. <coughs> Excuse me. That I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what I, he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give me he to, uh, give heed to me. <coughs> there an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted by every, even by my judge. So if I go forward, he is not there, or go ba or backwards, I could not perceive him. On the left he hides, and he ca I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I, that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come out like gold. My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his ways, and have not turned aside. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured in my bosom the words of his mouth. But he stands alone, and who can dissuade him? What he desires, and he does. For he, has, uh, com he will complete what he appoints for me. And many such things are in his mind. Therefore I am terrified at his presence. When I considered, I am in, in dread of him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness. A thick darkness would cover my face. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have called you, I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it. He gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. <clears throat> I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 11 to the end of the chapter. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
But how are they to call on one to who, in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one on whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim them? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have, have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes from the word of Christ. But I ask, have you not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses said, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found in one of those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask of me. But of Isaiah he says, All day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of, his, of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the day that lies ahead of us. We pray for those who miss the rain, who miss the sun, for those who welcome the rain. We pray for those places which have too much sun and not enough rain, for those who have the reverse, for all those who are in drought and those who are in flood. We pray for those who are at the mercy of the weather to ensure their food and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the work of your servants, Samuel and Henrietta Barnett, for their work with those who are most disadvantaged, for their work to try and improve the lot of the people of East London. We pray for all who are living in densely populated areas, for those who don't have clean water or sanitation, for those who are living in slums, for those who are in desperate need of help and improvement. Help us, Lord, to work alongside all those peoples and those nations who are in need. Help us to share freely our knowledge and technology, to build up each other. But let us also be receptive, Lord, to learn from other cultures and other peoples. Help us, Lord, to know that we are not the saviours, but you are saviour. Help us to realise that we can learn as well as teach, and that there is much to be known and gathered from all parts of society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are sick at this time for those who are in the hospital, for all who have died. We pray especially for those who are worried and anxious about their jobs and their livelihoods, those who are anxious about meeting up with others, for those who still feel restricted 
and contain. We pray for those who are trapped in toxic relationships, for those who are in need of rescue. We pray for those who have had surgery and operations cancelled or delayed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you send your Son as the Prince of Peace. We pray that your peace would envelop the world. We pray for all places of violence, of all places of conflict and of war. <coughs> we pray for those who would oppress others for their differences. We pray for those who are oppressed. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones in terrorist attacks. We pray for a time, Lord, when there is peace and there is no more war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray especially for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Ella, Mary, Tina and Caroline. We pray too for those who are known to you alone, Lord. For those who are suffering and are in need of your support. Send your healing love on all who suffer. Watch over those who are struggling and those who are in need. We pray too for those who are reaching the end of their lives and those who have recently lost their lives. We pray especially for Shani and for her family. We pray for those who are having to delay funerals and memorial services. We pray for those who are anxious to bid a final farewell to a loved one. Lord, be with all those who mourn, all those who grieve. Gather up the souls of the recently departed, embrace them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which no, whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your, your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me this evening at 5pm for evening prayer. Until we see each other again, God bless, stay safe and have a very good day.